name is Eric Warner. I'm a partner at Eagle Point Hotel Partners, and I'm joined by Ben Pundle, VP of Brand Experience at Edition Hotels and founding editor of Hotel Life. We're at the 2017 Independent Lodging Conference in Brooklyn, New York. Ben, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. We're here just to ask a couple straightforward, simple questions about uh, you and some of the things that you've been doing uh, in our industry for now 20 plus years, uh, perhaps a little. It's true. Yes. Uh, tell us about the hotel life. What was the inspiration for? I uh, I saw there was a kind of gap in the digital world, uh, um, and the, simple though it may sound, I realized that uh, millennials after the after the crash suddenly had money again to to travel and there was nobody speaking to them. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of the travel media was focused on um, uh, on a slightly slightly older, more established market and, uh, and, and they were reading departures and Condé Nast travel and travel and leisure, but nobody was really speaking to this new generation of, uh, of um, millennials. So uh, I remember sitting in Empire Diner after playing soccer one day and I said to my friend Ben, I, I said, you know, I, I, I love travel, I love hotel. Then nobody's speaking nobody speaking right, to the right. cool crowd, the younger crowd. I said, I'm gonna start I'm gonna start this hotel, you know, website that kind of creates the, the you know, celebrates the create creative side of the hotel industry. And he said, uh, you know, um, do it, Pundy, do it, go for it, go for it. And I don't think he ever really thought I was going to do it. And right, then, uh, it was an after soccer conversation. Yeah, it was an after soccer conversation. Yeah, we probably flowing. didn't. We probably didn't win. So it was, you know. Um, then and fast forward, how many years ago was that? It was four and a half years ago, and it's uh, it's been a it's been a hobby, but a real passion project. I love it. Um, and we now have 150,000 subscribers, all organic, yep. and we just kind of slowly plod along. And we really try and look for those uh, for those interesting places, whether it's a, a boat house, boat house hotel or a lakeside guest uh, you know guest house, uh, as well as uh, as well as more traditional lifestyle hotels. Have you ever thought about taking it to another level? When I review uh, the website, probably every couple of months, I find it fascinating that uh, the people that you interview and the places that you talk about um, are always at the forefront of our industry, meaning there, there are folks who are traveling throughout the world experiencing these different uh, experiences, and just for the love of the experience, they're more than happy to share with you guys mm -hmm. through your, your website. Do you think you could take it to the next level and that could become? Yeah, I would love to. I'd love to take a hotel life to the next level. Um, I'd love to do retreats. I would love to work on a, a lot more collaborations. I would love for the collective that we have working on right. a hotel life right. to, to consult. But I also am very well aware that I work for Ian Schrager and yeah. for Edition Hotels and that I never want to blur the lines. And, and so for now, I'm going to keep a hotel life as a, as a passion project. So let's talk about that for a second. Uh, working with Ian Schrager, Edition Hotels, A, your role, and then B, what does it take to create a successful hotel? Like Special source. Special sauce. Special sauce. And nowadays, by the way, right, the formula <coughs> seems to keep changing. Yes, it does. And that's what we were talking about yesterday, the impermanence of the creative, uh, the creative process. Right. And I think that's, that's really important. I, I, I've, I've worked with Ian Schrager on, in some capacity for the past 18 years. And, and the hospitality landscape has changed numerous times. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a matter of staying at the forefront of, uh, of uh, of the industry, but at the same time, really respecting the past. Yep. And um, it's a fascinating time, I think, because the industry is so fragmented. There are a lot of really creative people. Um, uh, it's an exciting time. There's people uh, do very creative, progressive projects all over the world, whereas I think the lifestyle, call it what you will, lifestyle hotel in industry 
was certainly visible in certain pockets around the globe, but now I think it's it, it's everywhere. Um, you see someone like Restoration Hardware or West Elm, yeah, or even Nobu going into the hotel yeah. sector. Yeah. Say, say no more. Yeah. Say no more. Say no more. Ian Schrager, the godfather of the boutique, the independent hotel, arguably. Who is next? What is the next generation of hoteliers look like? Are these the folks who are... That's a really interesting question because I don't think there will ever be the... There will never again be the Ian and Andres who, who kind of pioneered that space. Mm -hmm. I think now there will... There, there are very creative uh, um, owners all over the world. Um, I was just in Lisbon and uh, I met the most uh, creative progressive thinkers that have hotels in uh, in Georgia With the uh, yes yeah now. yeah and, um, and and they're doing incredible things I met the owners of, of, of G rough in Rome and and there are just people doing amazing things as well as them reconnecting with um, people like Paul who owns the rock house in J Jamaica, Jamaica who right. who Paul was Salmon. yeah who was te telling me about his um, his uh, you know how, how the Rock House has always had a real civic responsibility, and mm -hmm. and funds the, the the schools, and you can go and 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 volunteer in the schools, and I think that's a really important important role. Talking about how how that creative process chain, changes, and I promised I wouldn't get too political yesterday in my uh, <laughs> on the panel, yeah, yeah. but but I think it's very important that hotels, as pil pillars of their community, adopt especially right now, a kind of civic, social, environmental Even responsibility. Even more so now than ever. More so now than ever. Yeah. And, uh, and, and we, you know, I'm, I'm quite a diehard believer in, in leading by example, so we're working on a, a lot of projects with, with Edition that, that really kind of lives that message for all the right reasons. It's funny because in light of, without going into that political realm for a moment, what we are seeing and feeling at least at the hotels that I own, is that our teams want to be a part of the mending of That's some great. of the fractures in society. And by allowing travelers to come from all over the world and stay at our little mm. hotel in Wyoming, we are doing our part 50 rooms at a time in order to mend fractures between mm -hmm. whether it's a Russian family staying with us mm -hmm. or someone from the Sudan. Uh, it gives us every night 50 rooms of opportunity mm -hmm. to make stronger ties throughout the mm -hmm. world. So it's really, mm -hmm. it's important. I think, I think we have a responsibility. I think our business is based on not only tolerance and acceptance, but celebration of different, exactly. different cultures and communities. Yep. And, I, and I think uh, um, uh, to send that message to, to, to the hotel owners and operators yep. is very important, especially now. And that's why I've got a, you know, I've got a huge respect for Arnie Sorensen. Uh, uh, the, the, the CEO of, of, of Marriott um, and, and given that it's the, the largest hotel company in the world right now he sends out very uh, intimate poignant communications about about that about tolerance and about acceptance and about welcome, welcoming communities and I, I, I've got a huge amount of respect for him for that I, I agree he is doing the right things and it's wonderful to see that uh, we have a couple more minutes. Let me ask you about some of your favorite hotel experiences. Mm. Do you have a favorite hotel? I do. I have a favorite hotel. Uh, Are you able to tell us? What yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think Are so. The camera's rolling. Okay. Uh, my favorite hotel in the world is, is a hotel called the Hotel Nord Pinus in Arles in France. Okay. And I was once reading a book on vacation uh, called Picasso, My Grandfather by Diana Picasso. And uh, I read a, a page and it was, it was just kind of uh, a short excerpt about how Picasso and this, fav and this a famous uh, matador called Dominguez mm -hmm. would go and stay at this hotel in the 50s uh, when they went to your know, party and to watch the bullfights. And I remember I was going to a wedding in, in the Camargue, which was miles away from, from uh, the Hotel Nord Pinus, but um, we took a pilgrimage to the hotel 
and it was filled with magic. It was owned by, uh, for many years, owned by a famous clown and cabaret dancer. Oh my goodness. And wow. it had all the that, magic yep. you expected mm -hmm. from the cabaret. Wow. And it sat at the head of this, you know, typical European square. Mm -hmm. And it just, uh, just had that sense of true, genuine, magical hospitality that rarely exists these days. So, uh, yeah, my, that, that's my favorite hotel. Then, folks, I can't say enough about this interview. It's been wonderful. Ah. Ben, thank you again. Thanks very much for having me. Thanks for being a supporter of our, our Congress, as they say. Always. Keep it up. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.